Hello, and welcome to Urban Hood Money Talk. It's a fact that we need money to enjoy life and focus on the things that we really like. I'm your co-host, Ali, and I'm here with Mushi Buya. Our mission is helping you gain financial freedom. Are you frustrated with your resume? You may be one of those persons who applied for so many jobs and you put your effort and time to update your resume for the particular job, but still you didn't hear anything from them. So what can you do? So today we are going to learn from a professional, Ali Buyan, who is doing this for a living. So let's get started. First tip that you're going to learn today is a resume won't get you a job. The purpose of a resume is not to get you a job. The purpose of a resume is to get you an interview. So you um, need to really put your best efforts and your best foot forward in order for you to get through that first elimination process and get called in for an interview. After that, you have to focus on what do you say during the interview? What are the things that you can uh, highlight? Um, But a resume doesn't actually get you a job. A resume really is focused only on getting you through that first round and getting you an interview. And that's something I think that people need to understand in order to cut down a lot of verbiage, a lot of uh, unnecessary details on their resumes. I've seen resumes that are three, four, five, six pages. Um, That's not going to get you an interview. (laughs) So um, that's the first thing that you need to realize. You're not applying for, you, you are applying for a job, but by submitting your resume, what you're really asking is the opportunity to get an interview. Okay. You should also know big companies receive anywhere from 50,000 to 75,000 resumes every week. Um, And so that's a lot. (laughs) There's no way that they read all of those resumes. So what happens, of course, um, people judge resumes in less than 10 seconds. If you send your resume to a recruiter, the chances that they are going to read everything that's on there are very slim. Um, How much can you really gain in 10 seconds you can ask yourself look at somebody else's resume and time yourself and say what does my eye see and what can my brain compute in 10 seconds of looking at somebody's resume so anything that's over two pages probably is not gonna is not gonna do well for you um but what's even worse you know 10 seconds or less that's not a good thing that's a very scary thing because you put a lot of effort into your resume but what's even worse in most cases um, you won't even get 10 seconds what's even worse that in most cases people will not judge your resume at all. And the reason for that is that most companies and most recruiting firms use what's called ATS, Applicant Tracking Systems. That means they have robots, uh, software, combing through your resumes and going through and trying to decide whether to discard you or are you meeting the qualifications before a human being ever sees the resume okay so 99 percent of big companies use some sort of ats um, that kind of software these these bots um, and that means that 75 percent of the resumes that are submitted will actually never ever ever be seen by human eyes. Um, 75%. What you need to make sure is that you are not part of that 75%. You need to make sure that with your resume, you get into that 20%, 25% that does get seen by human eyes, whether that's somebody in human resources in the company where you're applying, whether that's a recruiter, um, doesn't matter. But the first step is somebody needs to look at your resume with human eyes. You have to pass the software, 
Okay, so there are a number of different things that you can do to make your resume ATS friendly. And the first thing that you need to do is make sure that your contact information is placed not in a header, but actually in the actual document. If you're, if you're creating your resume on Word, for example, um, don't set up a header and put your contact information in, and your name in the header because ATS software is likely unable to read the headers. And if they cannot pick up a name and contact information, where do you go? You go straight into the trash. So that's one big thing, um, especially if you have a resume that you know has a lot of stuff on it, you're trying to keep it limited to one or two pages, um, it's easier maybe to put that in a header and save space, bring it up a little bit, right? Um, but it's actually not in your best interest to do that. So keep your contact information in the main body of your document and not in a header. Okay, also for uh, ATS friendly resumes, the file type of your resume matters. What do I mean by that? We often think, you know, if I submit my resume, if I make my resume in Word and I submit it, it's quite possible that all the formatting that I have done is going to be lost if they either have a different version of Word than I do, or they use a different uh, program to open it than Word. Um, all of my formatting will be lost. And therefore, you know, it's actually better if I save my resume in PDF format because all of my formatting will be saved, right? If if they have, if I have fancy fonts that I'm using that they don't have, um, those get preserved in PDF format. If I use nice tables or graphics, those get preserved, okay? So we might think that having PDF for our resume is a good thing. However, sometimes if you upload a resume, it will specify which file types are accepted. If a PDF is not listed on the accepted file type, that means that whatever ATS is being used by that particular company does not recognize PDF files. So if you upload a PDF file, what happens to your resume? It can't be read. It's not going to be passed on to a set of human eyes because you can't even follow directions. So make sure when you upload your resume, make sure that you have your resume available in multiple formats and make sure that when you upload it, that you pay close attention on what file types are accepted by them uh, and, and follow those directions and upload the right file. <laughs> um, because, you know, I, I mean, you don't, you don't want to just set yourself up from failure um, before you've really done anything at all. Okay, the next thing is keywords to use. If you apply for a job, you need to look at the job descriptions by these companies and you need to make sure that whatever keywords they use are visible on your resume, whether you do that in the duties that you are describing that you have, or whether you do that in your, um, in your career summary on the top, um, maybe you have a section that says these are your skills, whatever that is, make sure that you read the job description very carefully and the keywords that they use in their job description should be present on your resume. The ATS software will scan for those keywords. And if none of those keywords are present on your resume, then how are they going to determine that you're fit to do that job that they're looking for, that they're looking to uh, fill, right? So make sure that you know what the keywords are and make sure that you, that you sprinkle those in on your resume. Okay, then fancy templates. We see a lot of resumes uh, that look really pretty. <laughs> um, 
but they might get scrambled and scrambled templates are far more difficult to read. Um, we'd like to think that software is smarter than a human brain, um, but in many cases it's not. So be careful with fancy templates. Um, simpler is better in most cases. Um, the same is true for graphics and charts. Those cannot be read at all by resume filtering bots. So again, I see a lot of resumes um, that have charts, that have graphics, people list their skills and then uh, put their, uh, you know, oh, five stars for I really got this, four stars for this is a, you know, intermediate skill that I have. Those kinds of things are not going to pass the ATS. So these are things better left off a resume. And, you know, if we're looking for a resume that looks really cool and, and you want to make sure that you stand out by, uh, by looking really nice, uh, you know, you might use software software like Canva rather than Word. Uh, and yes, you can make it look a lot nicer, but the problem is, again, if human eyes don't get to see it, then uh, all of this presentation of your resume is moot if nobody ever actually gets to see it. And, and the software, the ATS cannot actually read what you're putting in there, then there's no point. So be very, very careful with fancy templates. And I would say graphics and charts, keep them off your resume altogether. Okay, so that's about ATS friendly resumes. There's probably more to it. Uh that's it for this episode, folks. Thank you for listening. And if it was helpful to you, please click the like button and follow us so that you can listen to more of our podcast. You can also visit us at urbanhood.org to learn more about our other programs. We hope you'll check in with us again. And until then, keep learning and do whatever it takes to reach financial freedom and follow your dreams.